The Viking Longship Vikings and Viking ships have an iconic place in European and even North American history. It is widely held that Norseman Leif Erikson in a longship was the first European to discover North America, about half a millennium before Christopher Columbus. Due to the popularity of Viking culture, Vikings have appeared in many forms on TV and in the movies. Some interpretations of Vikings and their ships are more exaggerated than others. Firstly, long ships have a long history in Scandinavia, with their existence significantly proven through archaeology. This style of ship, with a shallow draft hull, long, narrow, and light, can be proven to exist as far back as the 4th century BC, and remained in use in northwest Europe until about the 13th century, when they were outclassed by newer, larger, and most importantly taller ships, which couldn't so easily be boarded from a long ship with the crew so close to the level of the water. We want you, we want you, we want you as a new Viking is a broad term given to Scandinavian seafaring raiders and traders that existed during the Viking Age lasting from the late 8th century until about the mid-11th century. Vikings were not a homogenous group, some Vikings traded, some were settlers looking for new lands where they could become farmers and craftsmen. Vikings spread Norse culture to foreign lands, but likewise, through trade and even slavery, brought foreign culture home as well, notably Christianity. The Norse homelands eventually became the separate kingdoms of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Vikings didn't invent the longship. They further developed it from their Iron Age ancestors and took them far abroad, influencing European shipbuilding for centuries. The British Isles, for example, adopted many versions of the longship. Most longships have a length-to-width ratio of 7 to 1. They have a shallow draft and can navigate through waters only 1 meter deep. This allowed the longship to perform beach landings for raids, or to navigate rivers. Many of these ships were light enough that they could be carried onto land, which was useful if wanting to move a ship from one body of water to another. Long ships could even be brought to shore and upended to provide temporary shelter. Early long ships were entirely driven by long oars, while later ships used both oars and a rectangular sail on a single mast. Long ships could reach speeds of 15 knots or 28 kilometers an hour. Sails were woven wool. Sails have often been portrayed as colorful, white and red. There is no evidence to suggest that white and red sails were the norm, but there is archaeological evidence that Viking ships were colorful. The Gokstad ship from the 9th century, for example, was found with yellow and black shields that would have been mounted alternately on the ship's sides. The Bayeux tapestry, depicting William the Conqueror's invasion of England in 1066, at the very end of the Viking Age, shows a colorful ship and sails. It also adds evidence that prow heads could be any number of beasts or dragons. Several Norse sagas written at the end of the Viking Age further provided details on the ships, including the mention of colorful and decorative sails. The manufacturing of large sails by joining different cloth sections also lends credit to patterns of alternating color. Some sails may have also been crisscrossed with leather strips to help reinforce the sail. Lastly, colorful sails also helped identify a ship. This would be particularly useful for a ship coming home, so a village would know if a ship was friendly or not. So colorful sails and frightening figures is one area where Hollywood does have a decent license to be creative. One classically wrong area is horned helmets, of which there is no evidence of. The hulls of longships were typically built from oak, they were clinker-built, meaning the edges of the hull planks overlapped each other and were nailed together. Early ships used tree nails or wooden pegs. Ships during the Viking era used iron nails. An 18-meter longship could use about 700 kilograms of iron nails. Spaces between the planks were filled with wool, moss, or animal hair mixed with rendered animal fat, tar, or resin. Longships were always kept as light as possible, meaning no cabins and minimal decking, so the crew was exposed to the elements. Tents could be made on a ship, but men usually kept warm under an animal skin. 
Vikings did not typically voyage in the winter, with pillaging and trading starting seasonally in the spring. Food aboard a longship was typically dried or salted fish and meats, with cooking not done aboard ship. To drink, there would be beer, water, or fermented sour milk. Such fermented sour milk products are still sold in Nordic countries today, like Filmjork, also known as Fil. Often betrayed in the movies are Norse funerals where ships are burned. This would have only been done to honor a particularly great leader. Cremation was common and written about in Norse sagas. Men were to be burnt with their belongings according to the laws of Odin, and their ashes cast into the sea or buried in the earth. One of the most famous accounts of such rituals comes from Ahmad ibn Fadlan, a 10th century traveler from Baghdad. Fadlan, a trade ambassador with the Volga Vikings, documented his experience in detail with the Vikings, including witnessing a ship burial that reportedly involved human sacrifice. Most Viking ships were not burned or used in a funeral. However, some, to the delight of archaeologists, were buried intact with worldly treasures. The Oseberg ship is one of the finest examples of a preserved longship with artifacts ever discovered with the bow and stern decorated with beautiful wood carvings. Sutton Hoo is a famous example of an Anglo-Saxon longship burial, which took place in the 7th century and included 263 luxury items that came from Europe and beyond. The larger the Viking ship, the more likely the Vikings who sailed it were rich. Vikings who raided typically split their spoils, with a chieftain or king taking a larger share. Raiders also typically didn't take all their spoils home. They would stop along the way to sell or trade goods. Vikings were also producers. Scandinavia had unique goods to trade, including walrus ivory, whalebone, and furs. Vikings were skilled artisans and craftsmen. Vikings were even traders between nations, picking up honey and wheat in England, trading it for wine in France. Vikings could make it through to the Middle East and North Africa via rivers or the Mediterranean to trade for silk or spices. Longships were built to pack as much goods as possible in them. There were, for example, no benches. Crews sat on their sea chests containing their possessions while they rowed. Longships came in a number of sizes and styles. Shipbuilders did not have codified building techniques or diagrams. Typically, a warship had around 30 rowing positions and were up to 35 meters long. A ship with a dragon's head was referred to as a dreki, meaning dragon, and often featured many ornate carvings. It's not fully known how Vikings navigated, but it's believed they may have used a primitive star chart. There's also been some archaeological evidence that Vikings used a type of sun compass to navigate to Greenland from Scandinavia. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching. I hope the video was to your Viking. Now, hopefully you know why they call it Norse America. Anyway, as always, do take care. We'll see you next time and have a nice rest of your day.